Hi, my name is Corey Tedro, and I am a Senior Solutions Specialist with Avid. And today I'm going to show you how you can use the Baselight Editions plugin from Filmlight to take your color correction to the next level inside of Avid Media Composer. Now, if you've worked with Media Composer before, you know that Media Composer has a very strong color correction tool set. However, there are situations where you may need um, some features that are a little more powerful, and that's where the Baselight Editions plugin comes in. So, for example, here, we have this uh, particular shot where I may want to add a little more of a, a highlighter focus to the actress's face. And now in order to do that, um, I'm going to need a shape just to focus on her. So a specific shape-based color correction is um, exactly what you would, an example of what you might use the Baselight Editions plugin for. So how would, how would we go about this? So I'm going to go over to my effect palette and I'll use the quick filter to quickly bring up my Baselight plugin and we'll drop that on like any other effect. Quickly go into the effect mode and open up the Baselight plugin. It opens up um, right with inside of Media Composer. Now a couple of things before we get started. Um, I'm doing this demo on a laptop, um, but one thing I want to point out is if you, if you were doing this with a, a, a client monitor connected, uh, you would want to uh, go into the Baselight menu first and make sure that client monitoring was checked and active. So as I said, I'm on a laptop, so it's grayed out, but if you did have a client monitor um, connected, you want to turn that on. So the other thing I'm going to do since I'm on a laptop is I'm going to change my color space. It defaults to Rec. 709. Uh, I'm going to switch this to sRGB. What you see here is just the, the default um, color spaces that are installed. Uh, you can add any number of additional color spaces in here. Um, uh, should you choose to do so. All right, so um, now that we've done that, let's get started. So as I said, I want to uh, create a shape um, to highlight uh, the actress's face. So we're going to do that uh, first by going into the shape page, a player, and I'll click on shape. And you have the ability to create any number of freehand shapes or start with a rectangle or ellipse. Um, so you can get um, as uh, unique as you want to with your shapes, as customized as you want to. I'm going to do a quick shape. We're just going to do a quick vignette because I want to show you how simple and easy it is to do this. So I'll create just a little oval. And we're going to move on to her face. I can rotate this a little just how I want it. Great. So now I have my shape placed. So now, um, because this is video, obviously, I do need to track this. So I'll move over and to our tracking panel, I'm going to choose New Area Tracker. Now this is a pretty straightforward track. Uh, there's, there's nothing that really obscures her face. She doesn't move uh, out of frame. So we're just going to do a track forwards and it's going to be done pretty quickly. Now um, if, you've, if, if you've done tracking before, you know that um, very often that is not the case, that tracks are usually a little more complicated. And that is why um, you have the ability inside of the Baselet plugin to track both backwards and forwards as well as extrapolating forwards and backwards as well. So if your track does get a little more complicated, you definitely have the tools within here to handle that um, inside of tracking. All right, so now that our track is done, we can move back to our shape strip and then over to our grade. So we're going to just do a quick exposure boost here. So I'm just going to bump that up a little. It's very subtle. I'll max it out so you get an idea of basically what the shape looks like. I've got a nice feathering there. Again, that's a little much, so we're going to pull that back. I don't want to go too crazy, and we'll just do a subtle highlight on her face. Now, I want to take a moment just to point out that all of the tools that I have inside of the Baselight plugin are also available in a full Baselight system. So what I'm saying there is that the Baselight plugin is just as powerful as a full Baselight system. Uh, so that's really important. It's, it's the power of a full base light system just inside of a plugin. Another thing to note is that if you happen to be using the Avid Artist Series color surface uh, with Media Composer or uh, any other application, that Artist Series color surface will also work with the Base Light Editions plugin. So if you have that connected to your system, um, the plugin will utilize it. Now, one thing to note is that the plugin drives that surface independently. It does not utilize the Yukon, the U control, um, the way Media Composer does. So, if you did want to use the surface with the plugin, you'd want to deactivate in, that in Media Composer before you went in to the plugin. All right, so now that we've finished our effect, we've finished our work, that was pretty quick. 
All I need to do is close out of the plugin very quickly. There's no rendering involved and it plays back in real time inside of Media Composer very fast. So the other thing to point out is that uh, the grading information that is now saved within uh, the plugin, the, the work that I've done in here, can also be passed around and shared on a full base light system as well as uh, other tools from Filmlight such as Flip and Daylight. So you have full round tripping workflows with the grading information from uh, Media Composer uh, going over to full base light system and even to some of the daily systems. So very powerful. All right, well, um, that is about it for me. Hope you enjoyed the session and have a great day. Mm -hmm.